this is part two of designing a sequence detector using D flip flops or JK flip flops. We discussed using D flip flops in part one. Here we discuss how to do this using JK flip flops. For D flip flop, the next state is given by QT plus one equals DT. We don't have such a simple formula for a JK flip flop which is a modified set reset or SR flip-flop. Here, J pays the row of set and K pays the row of reset. This diagram shows a JK flip-flop with inputs J, K and outputs Q and Q dash, the complement of Q. It changes state upon a positive clock transition. The next state, QT plus 1, is a function of inputs J, K, and the current state Q at time T, and is described by uh, this table. When J equals 0, K equals 0, the operation is don't change. That means uh, QT plus 1 is equal to QT the state remains unchanged. Keep in mind that reset means to put a zero uh, on the flip flop and set means to put a one on it. So when j equals zero, k equals one, it is reset. So the next state uh, of q is always zero. Okay. And we don't care of the current state. X here means don't care. When J goes 1, K goes 0, it is set. So QT plus 1 will be 1. When J goes 1, K goes 1, it is toggle. Okay. The next state is equal to the complement of the current state. From this table, we derive uh, this table that tells us if we want to bring a state from the QT to QT plus 1, what JK values should it be? To bring the fifth flop state from 0 to 0, we either don't change okay, the fifth flop or we reset it. Okay, there's JK equals 0, 1. Okay. And to bring it from 0 to 1, we either set it 1, 0, or toggle it okay, 1, 1. Okay. To bring it from 1 to 0, we either reset the fifth flop 0, 1, or toggle it JK equals 1, 1. To bring the state from 1 to 1, we either uh, don't change the state, the, the JK00, zero, zero, or set it uh, 1, 0. Okay. So this could be simplified to this table. Okay. So you can see that changing from 0 to 0, uh, we just need J to be 0. We don't care K. K could be 0, 1. Okay. So we have this entry, 0, 0, 0, don't care. And to change from 0 to 1, we just need j to be a 1, okay, we don't care k. And to change from 1 to 0, we just need k to be 1, we don't care j, okay, so we don't care 1. And 1 to 1 is don't care uh, 0. Okay. So th this is the, ta the table that shows how we can bring uh, the fifth flop from state qt to uh, qt plus 1. Now we come back to our sequence detector which outputs 1 when the total number of ones received is a multiple of 3. The state diagram could be the same as before, uh, as we discussed last time. 
which uses a multi machine model. But here we want to introduce to you uh, another way of doing it. Okay. We will use a more machine model as shown in this diagram. Okay. A more machine labels outputs at the state instead of at the transition as shown the, uh, here. Consequently, the main difference between a muni machine and a more machine is that the output of a muni machine depends on the input explicitly, while a more machine does not. Uh, next, as discussed in part one, we assign states uh, to uh, the four states. Again, we need two flip flops Q1, Q0. We assign this state to be 0, 0. Okay, meaning Q1 equals 0, Q0 equals 0, and this 0, 1, 1, 1, uh, 1, 0. From here, we construct a state table, like we did the last time. So when the state is 0, 0, okay, with input 0, it goes back to itself, 0, 0. If input is 1, it goes to the next state, 0, 1. Okay, so these two entries. Okay. And uh, if it is zero one one at this state, okay. when the input is zero, the output is zero, okay. uh, because at this state, okay, it's always zero. Okay. And the next state is zero one. Okay. So the output only depends on the state, not the input. And here, when it's one one, okay, say it, uh, the output is zero. When it is one zero, the output is one one. Uh, is one. It's always one. So and then the, the next state depends on the input. Okay. So we have set up this table. So now we need to fill out these entries J one K one T and J zero T K zero T. We have to answer the question okay, uh, to bring the state uh, Q one T from zero to Q1 T plus 1 0, so what should be J1 K1 uh, B? Okay. So we used the table that we derived uh, before the, uh, this table. Okay. So we rewrite it uh, here, okay, this table. So 0 to 0, we look this up, it is 0 don't care, so we put this up 0 don't care. Okay. And then for Q0 T to Q0 T plus 1, from zero zero, so again it's zero don't care. Okay. So zero to zero is zero don't care. Zero to zero uh, uh, zero to one is one don't care. One don't care. Okay. So we have fill out these entries using this table. Okay. And then from this table we uh, derive the uh, counter maps. For example for J1 uh, we just look at this entry. J1, uh, which is 0, 0, 0, 1, don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care. So we have this 0, 0, 0, 1, or others that don't care. Okay, so this for uh, this entry. So we find the expression for J1. Okay, we group these two terms together. So it is I, uh, Q0, you know, 1, 1 here, 0, 1, we get rid of Q1. Okay, and Q1. Uh, for, sorry, uh, for K1, okay. it is this entry, don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care, zero, 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 one. Okay. So it is don't care, don't care, don't care, don't care, uh, zero, 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 one. Okay. We group, grouped uh, these two terms together, and then we get uh, K1, equals uh, I, Q0, dash. Okay. And similar we get J0, K0. Okay. And for F, now F, because it is a uh, more machine, it does not depend on the input. So it is a function of the present state, Q1, Q0. Okay. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. 
So Q1, Q0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. So this one term, so F equals Q1, Q0. Okay. So we get all these equations and uh, we can easily construct uh, the circuit. So this is the resulted circuit. As you can see, uh, say J0 equals I. Okay, from, from here, J0 equals I. And uh, K0, K0 is IQ1. So uh, I and Q1. Okay, that's K0. And similarly, uh, J1, K1 are from these two equations. And F is equal to Q1, Q0. Okay, say Q1 and Q0, this is F. Okay. So this is the circuit. Okay. And now finally, this is the Verilog code. Okay. Uh, this is the code. So again, uh, this is the standard implementation of uh, a JK flip-flop. Okay. So we use a case statement to uh, do that. So for my dear CLCL, it don't change. So QT plus 1 equals Q. So CL1 is reset, so the next day is 1. Once CL is set, the next day is 1. Okay. And 1, 1 is a target. And uh, this is uh, the sequence detector we just discussed, a strict implementation of these equations, okay? All these uh, equations. So we get it, uh, we get it here, okay? Uh, F equals Q1, Q0. This is F, okay? And uh, this, is, uh, this is this. And this is the uh, test bench. Here we compare the output with what we got last time when we use a muni machine model and D flip flops. Okay. So here output F. Output F. is from our Moore machine. FD is from the Muni machine that we discussed last time using D flip-flops FD. So the, we do the in instantiation. So for Moore machine, the function, the module is called C detect JK, uh, this one. Okay. And for the previous one, it is C detect, okay, using D flip flops, okay. So the output is FD, okay, more machine F, okay. And others are the same, okay. And so now we can compile this using iVerlock, okay. And GK. Now the, the other module is in this uh, source code that we discussed last time. So compile them. So the executable is a dot out. And you can see that okay, the outputs of the more machine and muni machine are the same. We discussed the outputs of muni machine the last time. Okay. Uh, so they are the same. Okay even though we use a different approach, okay? So you could uh, study this example and uh, 
examine and try the code as well. Okay. Uh, thank you for watching. Okay. Uh, bye.